Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 59 scale Matchbox Ferrari F40. This came in the mail from a friend of the channel all the way from my home country of Canada. It was his wish that this get restored and given as a gift to one of the kids through my local Goodwill shop. It was a while ago that I got this, so thanks for your patience, RJ. Today's the day. Besides having a stepped-on rear spoiler, it's a plastic base on this with the expected rusty suspension strip inside, two-seat sport interior, and the matchbox wheels easily come out, and I'm going to swap them out later on. One issue to address is this windshield that has evidence of a little bit of kid paint on it, but that should come off easily, I hope. I want to draw your attention to a couple of upcoming builds, especially the end of this month, the January 4 Horseman Invitational. I've been asked to be the guest horseman for this, so be sure to tune in for that. And also, I'm going to participate in the Dibs build in March, and the next in my own Fury Road inventory, but most especially my second year YouTube anniversary, and the Porsche 2 Invitational, which you're invited to participate in, even if you don't have a YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of these and other upcoming specials. One of the most satisfying steps in the whole customization process for me is stripping off the old paint and getting things down to bare metal and a beautiful new blank canvas. In this case, some of that old blistered paint came off and revealed a very nice casting underneath. Good job by Matchbox. Today's community shout out goes all the way down to Australia and building the ultimate Matchbox car collection. As the title implies, Tyrone is amassing a very impressive collection of Matchbox cars, classics, and new. You will learn a lot about Aussie cars in particular, and I invite you to visit there and get all subbed up and become a new supporter for Tyrone. I promise that you'll really enjoy it. Thanks for doing that. While my primer is drying and setting, I go to work on this uh, semi-rough condition windshield, but it polished up pretty well, and once it was buffed up, a dip into the Pledge Revive for protection, shine, and durability. In choosing the paint color today, I wanted to avoid the red, which is what we all think of when we think Ferrari, and I decided to go with this Monte Shell Racing livery, which is an actual race car, from 1989 to set this one apart and make it distinctive and different. I've already laid down a brilliant white base coat. I'm shooting some Vallejo yellow right out of the bottle into my airbrush after a careful masking job. You see that I get a very nice consistent coverage. Hold your breath with me as I unmask this first step. It's not crucial to be perfect here because I've got to go over this same yellow-white border with the red, as you can see in the pictures on my workbench. But it looks like I had a steady hand today, and that came out beautifully for stage one. Okay. The Ferrari F40 is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive sports car with styling by Pininfarina built from 87 to 92. Production of the LM and GTE race car versions, which were made to compete in the same class entered by the Porsche 959 in FIA Group B, continued until 94 and 96, respectively. As the successor to the 288 GTO, the F40 was designed to celebrate Ferrari's 40th anniversary and was the last model personally approved by Enzo Ferrari. At the time, it was their fastest, most powerful, and most expensive car for sale. The marketing department was quoted as saying the F40 is for the most enthusiastic of our owners who want nothing but sheer performance. 
Luxury was not the main concern in this model. Power came from a 2.9-liter version of the 288 GTO's four-stroke twin-turbocharged and intercooled V8 engine, generating a peak power output of 478 horsepower. I'm going to bag up the old Matchbox wheels and break out a new set of Samed Chromo wheels with the familiar five-star spoke pattern that Ferrari often utilized. I had to cut and crimp the front axle to fit it in and they go back easily under that suspension strip and as always it's a good roller. The body on the F40 was an entirely new design by Pininfarina featuring Kevlar and carbon fiber panels for strength. Weight was further minimized through the use of a polycarbonate plastic windshield and windows. The cars did have moderate air conditioning, but had no sound system, door handles, glove box, leather trim, carpets, or door panels. Remember, luxury was not number one. The first 50 cars produced hatch sliding Lexan windows, while later cars were fitted with wind-down windows. All 1,300 cars produced left the factory in Marinello in Rosa Corsa Red and left-hand drive. But seven cars were modified and delivered to the Sultan of Brunei in right-hand drive. The Sultan commissioned modifications to the car's color, power, and interior comforts as well. As has been my practice recently, I'm making a quickie mini diorama out of a coffee coaster, this time just with a laser printed Ferrari logo with a little Mod Podge on top to seal it down. Putting the F40 back together was quick and easy because of the simplicity of the design. The interior and then the windshield unit with headlights goes in. The back is a tab and the front snaps into place and will be held together with an M256 size self-tapping screw. Number 133 is in the bag. Let's have a closer look. You can see a beautiful glistening finish that I got with the clear coat. It's important to let the decal set up for at least a day before doing that. I like all the sponsor ads on the lower panels. Backlights were done up minimal detail on the chassis, but I do think that shell livery sets it apart, don't you? The original had that blistered paint and over-exaggerated Ferrari badge on the hood. Then I think this new look really matches the research pictures that I found, and I have to say I'm entirely happy with the way this turned out and how it shows off under the lights in these little garage dioramas and on the Ferrari coaster. Into a blister pack it goes, as was RJ's wish, this will go to the Goodwill store as a gift for a little boy or girl. Thanks again, RJ, for taking the time and the expense to send that all the way over to me. I had great fun with this one. And thanks everyone for watching today. Come on back soon and often. It's coffee time.